I'm gonna show you my process of taking one sermon and turning it into a week's worth of social media content for your church. That means vertical videos, quote posts, carousel posts, text threads, YouTube videos, blog posts, and even full length books. We'll cover every major social platform and all the best tips and tricks in this video are also packaged into a one page download. Link for that coming a little later. First things first, this all starts with me watching the sermon in its entirety. No bots and no AI. And trust me, I have experimented with those tools extensively. I wanted them to work, I really did, because they promised to be huge time savers. They were all so bad. Uh, there's so much that we can use AI for, and we'll get to that a bit later, but the quality of the social media content we're going to be creating here is 100% dependent on your review of the sermon. The whole process hinges on this part. And what I'm looking for are standout sections that reside at the intersections of faith and culture, and that are ideally either emotional, relatable, or controversial. Now. Hear me clearly, when I say controversial, I don't mean sensational without substance, I don't mean outrage bait, and I don't mean anything that's disingenuous. Just consider that the way of Jesus runs counter to culture. So here's a great example, a post with the title, Why Your Spouse Matters More Than Your Kids. It's a pretty common teaching in many churches, outside the church, eh, not so much, which played a big role in this post reaching a wide audience because it was perceived to be controversial. Back to my review of the sermon, I'm really looking to mark out five different sections. I'm looking for three sections, 60 to 90 seconds long, that will turn into two short vertical videos and one carousel post. I'm looking for a quote, and I'm also looking for a longer section, between six and 20 minutes, that will turn into a full-length YouTube video. Once I've found those timestamps, I start working on the vertical videos first. And out of the gate, the main challenge I need to solve is contextualizing these sermon clips for the social media audience because I've seen the whole sermon. They haven't. They're missing 20, 30, 40 plus minutes of additional material. The secret? Writing a hook and injecting it into the first three seconds of the video. I'll show you what it looks like when it's all done and then we'll work backwards on how to produce it. And speaking of like, uh, could you hit that thumbs up for me? It really does help the channel out and thanks in advance. Writing a good hook comes down to what we call the three C's, cliffhanger, common, and care. When I write a hook, I give each of those three categories a score out of five, and combined, my total score needs to be higher than 10 out of a total possible 15 points. Otherwise, the hook that I've written is just not going to stop the scroll of a person on social. The first C is cliffhanger. What's the mystery I'm creating here? Well, we'll take a look at our hook here. The number one job of a parent. That's an unfinished loop. I could have written this hook as why it's the parent's job to bring their children to Jesus. That's just as accurate. It's faithful to the subject matter, but that hook already reveals the thesis. No good. The next C is common, and parenting content will always excel in this respect because it's the kind of subject matter that aligns with scripture and the missional emphasis of most churches, but it's also something our culture desperately needs. There's that intersection of faith and culture that we're looking for, right? And then finally, the last C is care. Does a person going about their day care about what you're talking about? And I always like to use gratitude as the you know counter example here because we can all agree practicing gratitude is healthy, it's rooted in scripture, and something that we could all do a little more of. But when I wake up in the morning thinking about my work and my kids and the finances and my marriage, practicing gratitude is not naturally top of mind for me. It doesn't mean that we can't bring people to that place, but we don't want to start there because it's not where their attention is. Their attention is on their kids though. Three more tips for you on these vertical videos. First, and I see churches mess this up all the time, keep your captions and graphics away from where the on-screen elements of the social media apps will go. I have a layer on my timeline with an overlay that guides me to make sure that I'm staying in the safe zone. Otherwise, your captions might get cut off by the like button on Instagram, let's say, and it'll look sloppy and even make the captions that much more difficult to read. Next. When you're compiling your video, it's okay and even recommended to emphasize the same part twice. So for me, one of my go-to moves is to have the video portion that's covered by the hook at the start of the video, those first three seconds, that same part of the video in the clip a second time. So for example, the pastor here at the beginning of the clip says, this is the primary role for us as parents. That same clip shows up again later on in the video at the 18 second mark. The emphasis helps the message sink in better and practically because this phrase is first used at the beginning of the video when the hook is on screen and the captions have not yet arrived and when many people may be scrolling through their phone with audio on silent, it means if you missed that part the first time, 
you get a second chance to hear it. And then finally, when dealing with sermon videos, the footage resolution is sometimes not so great. So when I'm creating covers for these, I'll grab a still and upload it to an AI tool called Remini. And, and here's where AI can be helpful. It will upscale that image and clean it up, which leads to a much sharper and quality cover for the thumbnail and grid. Uh, this is the process I use for creating two vertical videos for the week. They'll get published to Instagram Reels, Facebook Reels, TikTok, YouTube Shorts, and X. That's 10 posts across five social platforms already, and we'll put those on Tuesday and Thursday. Next up is the quote post. I'm largely straightforward here. As I'm listening through the sermon, I'm always waiting for those pithy one-liners that pastors tend to go to. Uh, the quote post is probably the easiest post to compile in the week. So if you wanted to do that first, that's cool. You want the quote to be snappy, short, and again, emotional relatable or controversial is what you're looking for. And uh, here's the one that I've got. Christians have no business in judging the behavior of unbelievers. Under 100 characters, that's awesome. And we'll put this on Monday, published as an image to Facebook and Instagram, and as text only to X. The next thing we're gonna do is take that third 60 to 90 second segment we identified, extract the transcription and use this to make our carousel. How you go about this is really up to you. If you are an experienced writer, you may want to prepare the carousel yourself using the transcription you've generated. You may also want to explore an AI tool that rewrites or rephrases content. And this is one of the ways that I believe churches can ethically use AI tools. You have the source material already. You're not asking the AI to come up with anything from scratch. You're simply having it polish up the pros. And on the design front with carousels, we've seen the best performance with minimal design. On the cover, we put a big, bold headline and then smaller text in the remaining slides. So here's what I came up with, and we'll publish this to Instagram on Wednesday. Now, the downside of carousels is that you can really only publish them to Instagram. So to fix this, we're gonna take the cover image only and publish that to Facebook and X and use the copy from the entire carousel to create a text thread. Voila. Now, recall in my sermon review, I marked off five sets of timestamps, two shorter segments that we've used for our vertical videos, one quote, a third shorter segment for our carousel, we just use that as well, which leaves us with our longer six to 20 minute section that's gonna power our YouTube video and our blog post. We'll start with YouTube. It's the second largest search engine in the world. The average length of a first page YouTube video is 14 minutes, 50 seconds. Your church has video content already filmed perfect for YouTube, but not in its current form. Because it's too long, the title is not optimized for search, the video itself might be tucked away in the live tab so it's not even visible on your channel at first glance, it doesn't have a compelling intro, and it's almost certainly lacking an eye-grabbing thumbnail. The content is there though, we just need to prepare it. So the idea here is during your sermon review, to identify a segment of the overall message that can stand on its own. You know, commonly, a preacher's sermon will have three points. Each of those points often make for a great standalone video, as one example. So here's the sermon video that we're starting with. It's titled Conversation Starter, Foot Washing, September 3rd, 2023. A typical YouTube post for a church. This content will be lost to the archives if we just leave it like it is. So let's not. Here's what we ended up with. Correct length of video eye-grabbing thumbnail with a title optimized for search that takes the truth of scripture and makes it accessible to all people. And let's watch the first 30 seconds or so of the YouTube video together. Most of us would have like taken that time to like twist the guy's leg off, right? That's what Jesus could have done at that moment. Have you ever thought about that? That to me, outside of the crucifixion, is the best demonstration of the love of God in scripture. We only get a glimpse of Jesus' interactions with his disciples. And in those, as the gospel writers are talking about, they share some of their mistakes. They share... Uh, they a few important notes for you. The first 10 seconds tease the content of the video with captions on screen. The captions are crucial because YouTube videos autoplay when you hover over the thumbnails on desktop. This gives users the ability to essentially preview videos without sound before committing to them. We need captions and an engaging opening to hook those viewers. I also add a backing track to this opening segment to bolster that as well. And when I'm searching for audio for this purpose, I'll often use the keyword suspenseful because I want the track to have an unfinished feeling. And then finally, now when we do transition to the full sermon clip, I'll put a lower third on the screen with the church's name, the pastor's name, and the title of the video because when people come from search, 
They don't know who this person is or where they're from, so we need to make our introductions. We'll package that video up for YouTube, we'll link to the full service and message in the description, and that'll go live on Friday. Now, at this point, we've got content from Monday through Friday. The easiest post to create, the quote, that's on Monday. The most involved post to create and develop, the YouTube video, is on Friday. So if you wanted, you could go through this entire process starting on Sunday, the day the sermon was preached, and have it all done before the week is out. Personally, I would not recommend that. I would suggest being on a week delay instead. Uh, there's really nothing to gain from an effectiveness standpoint by publishing all that content before next Sunday. And if anything, it's just gonna burn you out and make it more likely that you can't keep this up, which is the last thing that you want. And I've got a whole Instagram post dedicated to this if you want to learn more. Believe it or not though, we're not done yet. And this section is really only for the real sickos because what I'm also gonna do now is take that YouTube video transcription and turn it into an entire blog post as I have right here with a title optimized for search, formatted with headings, relevant hyperlinks, appropriate line breaks, bold, italics, etc. I'd embed the YouTube video that we just published into the blog post itself and use that thumbnail for the featured image, publish it to my church's website on Saturday, and now we've got an article that can rank in search engines and bolster our church's SEO presence. But more importantly, we've extracted a teaching from our pastor that can be used down the road practically. Okay, so Imagine someone comes to church dealing with, in this case, betrayal. Someone on leadership meets with them for pastoral care. This essay gets printed out and given to them at the end of the session, and now they've got something to revisit later on in the week. They've got a helpful reminder, rich in biblical encouragement from their own faith community sitting on the nightstand, let's say. Follow this process every week, and you'll have 52 written essays capturing the journey that your church has been on over the past year. The final act is to take those essays and compile them into an actual book. And I like to design it like a coffee table book with a beautiful cover and layout of pages so it's a standalone art piece. You can sell these in your church to recoup the printing costs. You can give them away. In either case, they make for powerful and beautiful embodiments of your church family's journey over the previous 12 months. And that's how you go from one sermon to a complete social media calendar that covers every social platform and every content format from long form text to carousels, to quotes, to stills, to short form video, and long form video, it is all here. I've refined this process working with churches one-on-one -on -one over at socialsermons.com. If you wanna work with me directly, we're glad to do all of this for you. So you never have to lift a finger. We only have capacity though for 100 churches. We sold out those spots in the first week that we launched. You can join the waiting list on socialsermons.com that being said, if you do see the book a call option on the site, if you can click that, that likely means we have a few spots available. What I do try to do is keep two to three spots open as much as possible. So if you think you'd be a good fit, you can book a call with me directly and we can see if we're a good match for each other. Uh, at the bottom of the Social Sermons homepage, you'll also find a section called Recent Work. And all of the examples that you saw in this video are there, so you can see them in greater detail. And again, that link is in the description of this video. Also, as promised, I have also packaged up this entire social media calendar into a one page cheat sheet with all the nitty gritty details that we've covered. You can scan the QR code on the screen or click on the link in the description to find the page where you can download that cheat sheet. And thanks as always for your time, attention, and trust. We'll talk soon.